Welcome to Seth Craft. I am in the early stages of building a 20 by 30 shop, and the first thing I have to do is get the foundation ready. To do that, I am setting up batter boards. These are a 90 degree structure with a post in between and string lines that will help to find the corners and also keep a level line all the way across the entire parameter. So if you're interested in learning how I set up these, then continue watching. The first step is to find the general location of where the building is going to be. And so I have put my tape measure at the side of my other building. And I've got my stake right here at 16 feet. This is also the high spot of my plot of land here. Now that I have my first stake here, I'm going to also measure out the 20 by 30 just to kind of give a rough idea of where this building is going to go. I went 30 feet in that direction, and now it's 20 feet in this direction. I measured out all four sides, and now I need to measure the two diagonals to make sure those are the same, and that will give us the general position of this new 20 by 30 foundation. The math behind the diagonal is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so 20 times 20 is 400, 30 times 30 is 900, so you've got 1300. The square root of 1300 is 36, so 36 feet is where the diagonal should be on this to make it square. Now that I have the general idea of where the corner of my building is going to start, I've got some batter boards. So this is essentially three stakes. Now you would ideally want these to be a lot taller, but for my little structure right here, this is gonna be fine. So three stakes, and I've got these two pieces, which will be set at a 90 degree. I'm just gonna use some uh, exterior screws here to get this going. Now I just cut these boards out of a, a decking board and you can use two by fours if you want or buy some uh, batter boards that are specifically designed for this kind of application. Now this stick represents the actual corner of the building. And so I'm gonna step back my batter boards about a foot in either direction so that I have plenty of room to dig around whenever I actually put this uh, foundation block in. So go ahead and get this in a general 90 degree from my stake there. All right, and now I'm just going to use these other stakes here to uh, drive into the ground. So you can see this is kind of an arbitrary location because these strings are gonna take care of the rest of the work. All right, those stakes were a bit stubborn, but I got them in the ground. Okay, I've got a level, which is important. And I've also got some more screws. For now, I'm gonna step up here to about this level right here. And we will go ahead and put the screw in over on this side. And that will allow me to level this out. And then we'll be adjusting it some if need be here in just a moment. I'll try to do better on the next one to keep my stakes parallel, but as you can see, that gives enough room around the arbitrary stake right here, so I have room to dig around for my footer. So next we're going to be moving down to the next stake down here and putting the same batter boards around there, and then we'll do that on all four corners. All right, let's build the next one real quick. We'll go ahead and make my 90 degree over here on this piece. All right, just like that. Once again, I can step back about a foot away from there. That number is arbitrary, but as long as I have enough room. Okay, once again, I'm going to drive in these stakes. What I should have done is put a middle taper on my stakes. Instead, it was 
allowing it to drive off to the side. Anyway, I'll be pulling these up soon anyhow. Now, previously, I just held this up and then leveled it off like this. But now we need to have this at the same height as our previous one. So let's step over there real quick and attach a string and a level and we'll bring that over here. I have this batter board level. It's the original corner. And so everyone from here on out needs to have this same height. And to do that, what I'm going to do is use some string and a line level. So I can just find the level based on this one right here. Let's go ahead and tie this around here, bring that down so it is level with this board. And I'm going to take this line level and we're going to go over to our other boards and make a mark. Okay, I've got my line level right here. I'm going to snap this onto my line and then I can now pull this line against this post until I find a level mark here. I can already tell that I'm going to run out of room here because this needs to be up about that high. So we're going to have to go drop down our original uh, batten boards down. I dropped the original down by about six inches. So hopefully that is sufficient here. Let's get our bubble back up here. All right, I believe right here we'll do it. Now I'm going to come back later and use a laser level. Uh, whenever it's nighttime, and that should allow us to see just how accurate I got here with this. But for now, let's go ahead and say that that's good enough. So I'm going to take my level and my impact driver, and I'm going to match the top here with this position. Now that I have the first screw in, I can use my level to find where the next one's going to go over here. Second batter board is now leveled out to this side over here. So theoretically, I could take my same string and line level over here and it would match up. Let's see how well we did. Yep, looks pretty good to me. The first two batter boards are up and installed. So like I was saying before, this is the high corner. And so the posts are gonna be a lot taller here. And as you can see, I've leveled them out down there and it's almost to the top of the boards which means this back corner over here may still pose an issue. I might just cut some longer pieces uh, to keep that good. But this one over here should be about the same height as our first one. Now, now that we've done these two, you've seen the process. I'm going to install the other two. And then later on this evening, I will bring out the laser level and we will see just how well we did because uh, whenever it's dark out, if I set that laser here in the middle, we should be able to line up this corner as our original and see where it lands on the others. And that will give us the most accuracy. Now, why do you want to have these leveled out? That's because we're gonna be dropping a plumb bob from the string down. So let's say we need to have a, another footing or footer right about here on the 10 foot mark. I can drop down from the string and know where to stop my concrete foundation. And that's the same thing for the middle post here and all the different uh, footers that will be in this system. Otherwise, you wouldn't know where to dig. And if you just put in a center or a, a corner post, then your digging would be right where your post is. So stepping back allows you to have more room to do your digging for putting in those footers. So I'm not doing the best job at keeping these posts totally vertical, but the main thing that matters is the horizontal piece that's in the 90 degree here. I have the batter boards in place for all four corners and I have taken the string level and made sure that each one of them is level with the other. Now this one over here was about a quarter inch low, so I may adjust that, but it's close enough that I may just leave it. All right, so what I should have done at first is use a more permanent stake for the middle. And so I was gonna buy some rebar and that's why I did that. But I went ahead and cut some wooden stakes because rebar was too expensive. So let's go ahead and pull these out and we're going to do a much better job at finding the exact dimensions of the building. And that way we can set our strings and 
we will be ready to start digging the footers. So let's go ahead and make sure we have this building measured out and square. I know this spot right here is where I want this first corner because it is 16 feet away from my other building. This doesn't have to be too uh, far in the ground as long as it stays in place while I get the string out. All right, that's pretty close to where I want it. All right, good enough on that one. I put a screw on the diagonal of the front corner so I can use this to measure in both directions. Now let's take the tape measure and measure out exactly 30 feet over here to the other side. Not bad at all. Looks like my stick was about an inch and a half away from the corner that I needed. So that's definitely good to know. So I'm only gonna put this in a little bit because I may, oops, needs to go on this side. I may need to adjust the diagonal a little bit. So. I'm gonna drive this in just enough to keep it in position. I just spent a few minutes making sure the building was square. So now if I take my tape measure from diagonal to diagonal, I've got 36 feet from here to the other side, which means we are now square and ready to go. So the next step is to install the string line and that's gonna use the outside edge of this uh, post that I've put in. And so we're gonna go from right here it's gonna go this way, right here, we'll go this way. So let's go ahead and jump into that step. I tie my string to a rock so I can let it hang down here for a moment. I'll be able to uh, put a screw into that here in just a bit, but for now, that'll keep that in place. And now I'm gonna let the string rub up against the side of this uh, stake here, and then run this out to the other side. All right, I can do a quick loop around here and now it's just a matter of moving this back and forth until it's touching but not uh, being pressed into it. Once you've found out where the string needs to be on the batter board you can place a mark and then angle a screw and that's what's going to hold the string in place. And now I can take this string here and wrap that around a time or two. And then I can move over to the next one, which will be off over on this side over here. And I'll wrap that and go the other direction. That way I don't have to cut my string. And the batter board system is done. So here's what one corner looks like. I've got the stake driven into the ground. It is level. I've got a screw here on this side, which holds that string going that way this one's wrapped over here which is going this way and that essentially makes the corner of the building here so now i can remove this stake whenever i'm ready and start digging in this area you might be wondering why I go through all the tedious trouble to put in the stakes the batter boards and the string there's a few good reasons for that. First of all, the stakes make sure you have a square foundation and you know where the corners are. So that's very important before you get started. Next, whenever you have the string stretched out between corner to corner, that lets you know exactly where to dig the footers between those corners. So for instance, let's say in this 30 foot section here, I've got to have six footers, then I'll know where to dig them. So I just have to measure out, let's say, five feet, five feet, etc., and then I'll know where to put those. Otherwise, I may have some that are off center and be frustrating later. And the last reason for doing the strings is to use a plumb bob, which will hang down from the top of that string and touch the ground. And so you'll know basically a height difference from level. So knowing that this side over here is my high side and the side back over there is the low side, I can, uh, measure down and know exactly where to bring up the low side to meet uh, level. So very helpful in all different aspects. Keep in mind that the foundation is the place you want to spend the most time making sure that it's correct. Otherwise, you're going to have issues later on because everything is built up from that foundation. 
I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Workshop. If you've enjoyed this video, then be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next part where we start digging the footers for this 20 by 30 building. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.